the Americans, uh, a lot of don't know Dr. Kelso the way I knew him. I, my full-time job when I was DA was to basically oppose the cartels. I knew the, the, who they were married to, uh, basically uh, how they slept, where they slept, what they ate. I knew everything about these guys. You know, they had so much money that when they wanted to impress a girl, they would say, where would you like to have dinner, sweetheart? They'd be in Mex you want to go fly to Mexico City from Sinaloa? They'd fly you over there and fly back. I mean, they had pilots at their disposal. They they owned banks, Sean. They owned restaurants. They owned car dealerships. Carlos Quintero owned a, one of the major dealerships there in Guadalajara. Whenever he wanted to befriend a commandante, he would he would bring him and say, pick a car. Pick any car you want on me. And I've got an office for you over here. And here's so much money so you guys can... Basically, open up your office. I know it. I've talked to commandantes that he did that for. He went and dined the government officials. That's how they, they, they bribed him and became friends with him. You know, they, they, they had one DFS commandante, Federico Castel del Oro, who told me that there was a, there was a trafficker that, 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 that was doing independent marijuana growing. And Cochiloco said, go, 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 go pick him up and bring him to me. So he said, uh, okay. So he's a commandante, so he goes and arrests the guy, and he brings him to Cochiloco. And uh, Cochiloco had a ranch there, and he had a backhoe, and he was digging, digging a ditch. He says, throw him in there. No, it wasn't one. It was four guys. Throw him in there. And he buried him alive. And from there, he got the name Cochiloco, which means crazy pig. They, they do stuff like that. And they use the police to do that. When, 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 when they asked me, my own government says, can you perform a kidnapping. Can you do, I was called back to Washington and the words they used were, can you conduct an extraterritorial rendition? This is the director of the DEA and I said, what is that? Kind of laughed a little bit and says, can you do a kidnapping? And I said, yes, I can do a kidnapping. Of course, but I don't know what you're talking about, extraterritorial <laughs> or whatever. I said, I'll just grab the guy and bring him over here. They were talking, you know, executive elite talk. I'm a street guy. When he said, can you kidnap a guy? Oh, is that what that means? Oh, yeah, I can't kidnap a guy. And he asked me, how would you do it? I said, very simple. I need money. Give me money and I'll get commandantes that I work with down there that I know. And they'll pick him up and bring him to me. He said, you can do that. And I said, yes, of course they can do that. He says, how much money would it take? I said, depending on who do you want me to kidnap? You know, if you want me to kidnap the president of Mexico, that's going to be a little pricey, but it's depending on who you want me to kidnap. And they said, well, what would what would it cost, let's say, to kidnap the doctor that injected drugs into Camarena when he was being tortured? I said, that guy? That's cheap. He wouldn't cost too much to kidnap him. He said, what are you talking about? I said, maybe $250,000. Is that U.S. dollars or is that, that pesos? Money? U.S. dollars, $250,000. Go to yep. the, Yeah. I said, yeah, but he said, and you can get him over here. He said, don't bring him to me here in the United States. He said, do it. I said, okay. So I did it. It didn't take me three weeks. I got Dr. Machine kidnapped, picked up, brought and delivered to me here in the United States. Like I said, in Mexico, you can buy anything. And if the United States, if we want to pay the commandantes to kidnap, kill somebody, we can do it too. We don't do it. But like El Mayo Zambada and the major, the real serious, uh, the, 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 the executive drug lords, they don't kill anybody, Sean. They don't touch anybody. They have the chapos, the dormidos, and all the people that decapitate for them and do anything. They don't even watch. They just said, make sure that you do uh, this guy, tear him apart, throw his pieces in somewhere so everybody can see. But they don't do it themselves. They're not macho guys. They... Most of them probably don't even carry their, themselves guns. They have all these federales, militares, they call them military guys, federal guys, protecting them that will do their dirty work. Then they have a Chapo Guzman and the Dormidos who torture people and bury them and unbury them and do all that dirty work. You think they're going to they're gonna do that? They don't do that. They're billionaires. They run hotels. They own banks. They have businesses in Europe. They're flying all over the world. They have, their, their mistresses are all actresses and, and, and singers and stuff. They have the most beautiful women. They live very luxurious lives. 
For instance, Fonseca would import all of the cloth for his tailor-made suits. A guy wore a suit even when he was in prison. He wore basically $1,000 loafers imported from Italy, silk socks. His perfumes and colognes were from Europe. He didn't even buy American. They were like low class for him. He had a special cologne for him from Paris, France. He would inject uh, uh, stem cells. He would fly in doctors from Germany. That's why he's still alive. He would inject stem cells. That's how they lived. He had five wives that he married through the Catholic Church. He corrupted the Catholic Church too. And he had his wife in a mansion. He never slept in, in, in the same mansion every night. He would sleep with a different wife. As he got older, he became very cynical. And, and his, his workers would ask him, Boss, how do you stay up with all those beautiful young women? He says, at my age now, I just pat him in the butt. Somebody else rides him <laughs> like horses. <laughs> he was that cynical. But they were all beautiful young women. And he was getting older in his, in his, in his, in his uh, age. But that's the way those guys live. I mean, come on. They're not going to get dirty and get some guy. The one that liked doing it because he is a psychopath. The one that enjoyed dismembering people was El Chapo. Look at his eyes. That guy's a total sociopath. Like I said, he was a, the, the, the clown of the circus. He wasn't running the circus. He was just put up front. I mean, think about it. And they made him here like, oh, we got a big guy. We got a big guy. And I'm thinking, Chapo is nobody. He's not a big guy. He's a dumb guy. No, the and U.S. Yeah, look at his interview with Jean-Pierre. The Jean U.S. Pen. made it I'm seem. the biggest drug in the world. Yeah, the, the U.S. made it seem as though they yeah. had captured uh, the, the, the drug trafficker version of Osama bin Laden. Th this is how Chapo was presented to us. So hearing your take on right. him, it, you know, it, it's eye-opening at the least. I, you know, it, it's, it, I, I feel as though we've been lied to, you know, by, I mean, which wouldn't be the first time that we've been lied to by our government. But they hung them out there like this big fish and they paraded them around the states and they gave them this trial and they locked them up and threw away the key only for you to expose that even in his own country, he was a clown. He, he was the flashy drug dealer, but he was not the boss. I guess overall, I'm not surprised. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.